Well, Ron, uh, as you said, the jury wrapped for the evening. They'll be back here at 9 a.m. at the Spalding County Courthouse, and that would be the earliest that we'll be receiving a verdict in this case. Now, in today's closing arguments, the state and the defense, they presented two drastically different cases here. The state says the witness testimony painted the picture, and it is enough to convict Frankie uh, Gebhardt on for the murder and then concealing the death of Tom, uh, Timothy Coggins back in 1983. The defense attorneys for Frankie Gebhardt, they say there's just too many holes, too many inconsistencies in the state case and that he cannot be found guilty here. Now, the district attorney argued the state's case delivered the closing argument today. He walked the jury through several witness testimonies uh, during this trial, detailing the defendant claiming he murdered Timothy Coggins back in 83, including information investigators had never released. The DA, Benjamin Coker, also told the jury over the past 34 years evidence was lost, and he's sorry he couldn't give the jury those crucial items as evidence in this case, but he said Gebhardt's admissions over the year to several witnesses help preserve this case. Admissions of Frankie Gebhardt to Christopher Baum, Willard Sander, Terry Reed, Robert Smith, Jonathan Bennett, Patrick Douglas, and Charlie Sturgill are all direct evidence that he killed Timothy Collins. And Gebhardt's attorney argued the state has not proven guilt beyond a reasonable doubt here. He said there is no proof several pieces of physical evidence that were presented to the jury, including a knife, were actually from the murder. They were found amongst piles of trash in a well Gebhardt uh, had thrown trash into over the last couple decades. It was on his property, and his attorney says those items could have simply been trash. His attorney has also said some witnesses have added to their stories over the years, and since several of them are in prison, they could be hoping for deals on their sentences in exchange for help the state. It's their burden to come in here to prove it beyond a reasonable doubt, and he can't help it. He can't help that they've lost evidence. He can't help that they conducted a bad investigation. He can't help that. It's not his fault. And, of course, Frankie Gebhardt had the opportunity, if he wished, to testify in his case. He decided not to testify today when his uh, attorneys rested their case. The jury began deliberating a few minutes after 4. They deliberated for approximately an hour today before deciding to break for the evening. As I said at the top of the story here, they'll be back here at the courthouse 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. We'll be here as well uh, waiting for a verdict, which possibly could come tomorrow. We'll send it back to you in studio. All right, Joe, thanks a lot for that in-depth coverage there.